Hello, this is Jitte Wagen and this is the fourth and final video uh, in a series of videos in which I will be introducing ArcGIS 10.7.1. And in this video I will treat a couple of subjects that have to do with uh, basically designing and reusing uh, elements of the map um, in, in the form of layer styles and templates. Okay, so the first thing I want to show is how you can save a layer style and how you can um, copy that onto another layer. Okay, now I want to demonstrate this by uh, dealing with this uh, our AHN file, so our elevation data. And in order to uh, to get into it, we'll go into the properties of this uh, file and uh, hit the symbology tab. And what's interesting here. Um, what I want to show is that you can, in fact, if you have a specific color ramp selected, um, you can um, actually change this color ramp. So if I have this color ramp and I can go in, right click on it and go into the properties, you can see uh, you come into this edit color ramp menu. Um, we can see here that this color ramp um, is basically built up of seven different algorithmic uh, color ramps. If we click on them, we can change their order using the, uh, the arrows over here. What we can do is we can ask for the properties of a single one. Um, we can change the properties. So we could say, well, I actually do not want this black, but I want to go to this, uh, this to black. Um, and, and what we can, can furthermore do, we can change the, the algorithm. And we can add or remove uh, new parts. So uh, we can add a random color ramp, multi part preset, or another algorithmic color ramp. And if I would do that, I could change its properties and then say, well, I want to go from black um, again to a color that hasn't been used here, which is quite difficult with this particular color ramp. But um, so. I think, I mean, this is not a course on designing color ramps. I'm just demonstrating the principle. So with a bit of creativity and imagination and going back and forth and looking at the effect of your designs on the visualization of your raster, you can make, um, you can optimize uh, color ramps to your liking, uh, either uh, aesthetical, uh, but also um, uh, for your, specific uh, uh, visualization and analysis purposes. So if I, let's say that I'm very happy with this one and I want to be able to reuse it, I right click again on it and I will hit save to style. And I can do it, save it, I will give it a name and I will say this is uh, color red jitter. And I will click OK. So now first of all, it is applied now. So you can see this, uh, this weird, um, piece of the color ramp going from right to black to, uh, to pink. Uh, and what I basically did, I saved this color ramp into our styles. Now I will come back to the style manager in a moment. But the, the interesting thing is that we can now use this color ramp for other layers. Uh, and actually we can use now uh, this color ramp for any new project that we will start up because it will be based on this, uh, on the style. Um, presets that we have. Now, in order to demonstrate this principle, we'll go to the uh, the larger map sheet, and I can click on the properties of the larger edge and data sheet. I hit this selection, and I can go for my designs uh, color ramp. So I click OK, and I uh, and now I'm using it as well. For, uh, for the larger age and sheet. Now, what we can see here, however, is again, is, is yet uh, another issue, um, because the they still are not uh, looking quite the same. Now, the reason for this is quite obvious, um, because the um, value range of both these uh, files is quite different. So we have our, uh, our uh, smaller area um, are, are cut out uh, age and data, which uh, has only a, an altitude range from 
7.6 to 14.7 uh, meters above sea level, whereas the larger sheet, of course, has higher and lower extremes. So we have the, the altitude goes from 5.5 to 21.7 uh, meters above sea level. So since the color values in the color ramp are stretched over this total range, you can imagine that for the larger sheet, the same colors have to bridge uh, a larger range of values, so they get stretched out much more. And this is why um, we have a very different visualization here. Um, they just, uh, the, uh, of course, the, uh, the cutout has much more detail um, through the different colors that are attributed because they have just uh, much, much less variation to cover with uh, with much more um, colors. Okay, so a solution for this would be to work with a layer file. So what you can do is in ArcGIS we can um, right click on uh, HN3 and we can uh, select the option save as layer file. Now, what does it do? Uh, I already made one, so I will be overwriting in this case. What does this do? Um, the layer file actually stores all the uh, manipulations and uh, visualizations, uh, etc., that you apply to your uh, shape file in this case. Uh, I mean, raster file in this case. Um, so it does not store the data itself, it only stores. Uh, in, in this case, the most important thing, of course, uh, for example, the symbology of this uh, of this layer. Now, in this sense, it is actually analogous to how a project file, the, the .mxt file extension of RTS projects, saves uh, pointers to source files and, and collections and symbologies, etc., but not the data itself. Uh, this is um, actually the same thing, but then only referring to a single layer. Um, and this is very useful because you can save this, and you can uh, reapply it, um, and make sure that you that you are actually using the same symbology. So to, to demonstrate this, I will um, go into the, uh, the raster file again. Uh, what I will do now, I will set the minimum and maximum again. I will set 11 and 8, which we found to be quite optimal. Uh, we will say OK. Now we can see here the same um, possibilities to save and to uh, to open um, the, uh, the 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 layer information. Um, let's save it as a layer file now. Yes. If we would now go into the uh, and sheet from the whole area. We click on import. Now you can see here that we could also just have uh, selected the, uh, the file directly because you get here in the symbology, uh, import symbology menu, you can get all the layers that you have currently in your project. But obviously, there are benefits to having separate layer styles, uh, files uh, with styles uh, saved to your hard disk. Um, but to demonstrate the principle, I will just open it, add, click OK. And now you can see that the color ramp is still here. It's actually been uh, copied, but because it was already set to the same, uh, we're not seeing that. And we now also have the, uh, the stretch type and the, uh, the values uh, edited. Um, and so if we uh, hit OK now, we can see that indeed we have the... Uh, same data uh, with the same uh, classification, so the same colors attributed to the same uh, altitudes. The only difference uh, that, that you can see is that uh, from the sheet that we downloaded, uh, buildings and other um, information has been removed, whereas um, in the uh, in the sheet in the HN3 data that we had within our project, this has not been. Uh, been done in the same way, so um, yeah, this is the only difference that you're seeing. And and in this case, remember that for now, um, this is okay because we have now. If, if we would just be interested in um, visualizing 
direct context, uh, the direct environment, um, the same uh, with, with the same color ramp. But if we zoom out, we can uh, see that we have quite large patches of um, of white and pink values, and that is because, of course, the uh, the H and sheet. Uh, is clipped on on at both ends because all the values uh, higher than 11 meters above sea level are now falling into the category uh, with the uh, pink color and on the lower end everything below 8 meters so maybe um, you could also think that if you want to have a similar um, symbology a similar color uh, distribution set for all um, all bits of LiDAR of edge and data that you import into your project if you want to just have a default visualization no matter what the purpose it, it would be best to get a set the minimum and the maximum to the minimum and the maximum values uh, for all possible sheets in um, covering the Dutch territory so you uh, you stretch it up the color ramp along the uh, the the largest range of possible altitude values and then you are sure to always have the same uh, visualization <coughs> okay now so as I mentioned uh, you can do the same thing with uh, with factor data uh, I won't go through the whole process but uh, just to show it uh, properties of this vector layer um, and here we have Top of the screen, draw categories using one value of one field, categories so unique value socialization. Then click, can click on import, and then you can see I can import symbology from another layer in the map or another layer file. And there's also something like a .adl file, which is quite old version of, uh, of RGS software. Um, and the interesting thing here is also to note that you can either um, import just the symbols you can also import just the classification or you can import the complete symbolism but if you would, would want the same set of colors for example uh, but you want to, to classify your data differently uh, you can also do that uh, using this um, this import function now and then as a final thing about uh, saving layer files um, you may just want to uh, store the data the, the layer file but also include the data so if you would for example uh, want to send your uh, layer your your shape file to a colleague and, and point something out that you that you made very clear by adjusting the symbology in a way that it comes out very uh, very well um, so you, you do not just want to send someone um, the, the shape file and you can also not just send someone the layer file you could of course send them both but another way to go about this is to uh, create a layer package and then you create a single file that contains both the data and the information that we store in the layer file so the colors and symbology and the classifications and what so that's also um, an, an, an interesting thing to know about how you can uh, work with the layers and the definitions when it comes to uh, well the most important part the visualization of the information okay so then to finish off this um, this first part about um, designing uh, styles and to uh, save layer files and definitions um, and reuse them etc I just want to say a couple of things about the style manager because basically if we design something whether it's a new symbol or it's a new color ramp or a new label style um, these new uh, designs are automatically saved into the style uh, the default style of RGS which is tied to us as a user now how can you uh, get a get an idea of what uh, w what's going on in that uh, in that style if we go to uh, function uh, the, the the menu option customize then to the style manager you can see here that we have the current style is actually indeed uh, ourselves working 
uh, at the moment uh, with uh, within this style under our own name and if we uh, expand the style we can see all the different items in that have to do with um, the symbology of uh, of our uh, layers and, and, and layouts we can see that they all have their own uh, entries here and we see that we have here a yellow uh, folder with color ramps and it is because we actually created a color ramp and uh, we designed it we gave it a name and this color ramp um, is not part of this uh, of our style so to say so here we can um, copy it to other uh, styles we can delete we can rename etc etc or we can just directly redesign and just uh, remember that everything that you add to your uh, to your, um, your, uh, your your map design or your, your layer symbology is actually uh, visible here and it is sa saved into your personal style that will be uh, that will be used every time that you create a new map document um, now what is interesting is that we can um, you can um, go and look for other styles so if we click on uh, the styles uh, button we can we have here a whole set of default styles and we could for example say well we want um, styles for um, conservation and if we uh, click ok then we see it's added here now and it gives us a set of specific north arrows a set of specific colors which already are uh, tied to a specific um, legenda item fill symbols line symbols marker symbols and uh, this will become apparent that we added this style if we now go into for example this uh, this point um, layer we go for properties and we look at the symbols now we see that we have a whole range of conservation um, a whole range of symbols which are actually in this conservation style um, so yeah th this is how you can uh, can um, turn them on and off and as you can see create new style um, or add style to list what we actually can do is we can create a new style say well this is a uh, I don't know um, for, uh, for for printed books and I want another style for maps posters or what have you and I'm going to create a default set of symbols and colors and color ramps that I will use this is how you can go about it you can create a new style you can what you then make actually is a dot a style a file so this file extension is actually dot style and then of course if you created this you can also send it to other people you can copy it to another computer so you can use this style uh, every time you, uh, you you work on a different location and these styles just for your information are here uh, stored under your name app data roaming s3 desktop 10.7 art map and we have here uh, all the style files so yes um i'll turn it off because it creates a whole lot of symbols that I will actually not use so it's just uh, going to take up uh, space in my uh, my interfaces um, uh, but yeah this is how you can uh, can go about uh, working with styles now with this I uh, come to the end of this uh, this part and what I will now uh, will go back to is where we left off in the first video with the map design and now I want to expand on the concept of map design um, with the concept of uh, using, creating um, and reusing templates. Okay, in order to engage with this topic I will uh, return to the layout view that we have been uh, using before. Um, so we have this, uh, this simple map design and I will uh, make this uh, a little bit more complicated to show what we can do with uh, making a, uh, a layout design okay now before uh, going into this map and changing or showing how you can adjust all these uh, different uh, map elements such as the scale bar uh, I want to show a an important um, uh, 
possibility of uh, of RTS and working with uh, with map layouts, which is uh, working with data frames. Now, I uh, I already mentioned in the first uh, first video that you can organize your data in a map by data frame. And actually, this item here, which is saying layers, is what uh, in RTS is a data frame, and this directly refers to this frame. So this is the data frame that all the elements, um, all the layer uh, information is within this data frame and all these map elements are connected to this data frame. Now, and um, you may have seen this coming, but what's interesting is that we can add another data frame. Um, let's do that. And now we have a new data frame. And this data frame is actually also here. Change the name, of course. Um, well, let's uh, let's call it now inset, and I will explain uh, shortly uh, why we call it like this. Um, but this is now uh, sorry. this is now a data frame. If you use want to do something with that data frame, make sure you have the right one selected. So you can now select these data frames. Maybe I will. Sh which of the uh, AHN file to make it a bit more clear. And as you can see, now that I select this data frame, it's also bold in our layer of content, a table of contents, and I can double click here and I'll set this to active. Um, this data frame, activate, and now this is my active data frame. So, um, now, what, what can we do with this data frame? We can use it to organize data in our table of contents. If we would like to have the same data, uh, but completely different organized. But when it comes to um, our map layout, um, it's interesting because we can, for example, use different zoom levels. Um, and let's say that we would be interested in our larger map to uh, visualize a single uh, trial trench that was dog, uh, but we want to uh, in this inset show the total um, organization of, uh, of trial trenches area. Now, in order to do that, um, first of all, I, in this data frame, I want to zoom in on a specific um, trial trench, and uh, we can use this navigation tools for this. Uh, let's say I want to go back to this um, trench 31. Um, now uh, I need to remember which one it was, but let's go and uh, select in this. Uh, oh no, I have it here, of course. Let's go for that one. Let's turn these off. Let's turn the uh, finds off. Now I have here my trench 31. Which is uh, not a really exciting. Um, trial trench but um, it serves uh, the purpose I will give it a uh, a nice symbology uh, which we can then use in our uh, legend uh, so I want to go for categories and we're well, uh, doing all these uh, these things before um, I will go to um, the interpretation I want something that resembles the color of the ground let's see if this is clear enough I click OK. So yeah, this is, this is I think it's clear enough. Um, we just assume that people understand what these um, uh, terms, these abbreviations mean. I don't think I have any clearer um, description, or maybe I should just use the four art over here. Maybe that is clearer. If I would use that uh, for um, uh, the symbology, um, well, for the symbology it doesn't matter, but for labeling in any case. Uh, so let's go for that. Okay, let's see if that's going to be. That is useful. Um, no, okay, I don't want the labels in the map now. I want the labels as part of the legend. So I will not use the labels. I will go into the symbology and I will select. Is the right one of these are the abbreviations so I will hear the written out terms and now I'm a bit puzzled 
why um, I'm not getting the text that is in the uh, attribute table. Okay, yeah, so this is a bit weird, um, but my best guess is that because these fields are uh, completely similar in names, um, assuming that the caps are ignored, um, it is um, not not seeing a difference between the two fields, and it apparently just uh, as the field with the abbreviations uh, set as the field to which the term for eyes is referring to. So well, let's just uh, step over this and accept that we will have the abbreviations in the legend. So I will uh, we will go for this um, visualization. Okay, so um, what do we want more? Um, maybe we want labels so we can have the uh, numbers of our um, features visualized. So I will go back, label in the same way and then set this to number. Okay, okay that's nice. Okay, and let's say that we now want the um, inset to show where this particular trench is in the larger uh, uh, hole of trial trenches. Now, in order to visualize that, we can um, take this uh, spore art layer one, which is uh, a layer uh, that, that shows the locations of all the trial trenches and we can go to inset and we can paste the layer over here. Now it's uh, not set to uh, to show so if I click this um, all these uh, elements show and they, uh, they scale uh, to within the maximum extent so within the, uh, the data frame. Now um, I do not really uh, care for the uh, classifications or the, the symbology with these trial trenches so uh, in order to uh, to make that uh, inset a little bit more uh, neat i can go to the properties symbology and i will just go for features and i will make them all black so we are basically left with a representation of the uh, trial trenches as a uh, simple shape I want it uh, navigation on the, uh, on the map sheet actually and now you see I have your very uh, uh, simplified version of the uh, of the, the trial trench um, organization now maybe I also want to uh, show the, uh, the harding so let's add that as well gray so, and then maybe we uh, we could also we would also want to have our uh, AHN data in the uh, in the other data frame. So I'll paste that one as well, switch it on. But still, I want a, uh, a modest inset just to give an overview, and not give any other data than just the, the overview of our data. So this could be, for example. A, the uh, the design for uh, for the inset and now of course we need to make sure that the viewer of the map understands where this trial trench is actually located in the overview now in order to uh, to show that there is this um this property of a data frame in, that in which you can show the extent of another data frame so if i uh, go for um, the properties of an inset data frame i have here the uh, the extent indicator tab now i can uh, add the extent indicator to this data frame and it will then show the extent of the other data frame so if i insert now the um, data the the extent indicator of layers I can say um, I want to show the frame. Um, so yeah, we could use frame, maybe make it a bit more subtle. Uh, indeed, red I think is a good color to indicate. Um, and let's see if this uh, if this works now. Click OK. We do apply, and now you see here appearing indeed a uh, a rectangle, and the area of this rectangle is exactly 
uh, the geographical extent of this rectangle over here. So in this way, um, uh, you can you can show the relationship between um, the different data frames uh, in your uh, in your layout. Okay, so up to so far about uh, data frames and uh, and the way you can uh, you can use them. Now let's go over to the to the rest of the, the map elements. Uh, just very quickly, let's look at the north arrow. Um, yeah, what 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 is there to say about the north arrow? We can adjust the style of north arrows, of course, different um, uh, default um, symbols we have for that. Um, we can also click on the symbol button over here, and then we can actually make this into anything that we want. And again, we are now searching in all styles. We can uh, also um, add uh, style references, and then also, of course, our own designs um, add to the, the set of symbols that we can use. We can also edit the symbol directly. We can even um, uh, draw. We can open. Uh, Files uh, for scaling vector graphics, for example. Well, there, there's an enormous amount of um, possibilities here uh, to change um, the north arrow or the symbol uh, you you would using to point to the north to your liking. Okay, now then about the scale bar. Now um, I'm not very happy with the scale bar. Uh, various reasons. First of all. Um, I don't think uh, indicating kilometers is very useful because we are looking at uh, the geographical extent of this data frame is really small. Um, so I don't think that's very useful. We could measure it and see this trial trench in itself is 25 meters. So indicating those distances in kilometers gives us uh, all these um, decimal values which are uh, a bit um, uh, unnecessarily uh, Unnecessary uh, complexity. Uh, furthermore, um, the uh, uh, scale bar is automatically adjusted on our zoom level, which means that it takes on uh, a value that respects the size of the scale bar, um, but changes the units. That that, that makes for a very um, irregular uh, distances between uh, the. Uh, Sub ranges, the subdivisions of the, uh, the scale bar, which again makes uh, the whole uh, purpose of the scale bar a bit uh, difficult on this map because how are you going to, uh, to easily uh, use this indication that this distance from the zero to, to here at the end is 0 0.022 kilometer? I mean, this is not a really easy tool uh, that, that adds uh, useful information to your map. So for these reasons I would want to show to uh, show you how to change the behavior of the scale bar and, and make it into something a bit more So how can we uh, go about that? Um, I will select it by double clicking um, and what I want to do is I want to adjust the number of divisions when I resize and not the value. Now, if I click OK, um, and I will now resize it, you can see that the uh, the units actually stay the same. Um, but if I make it smaller, the number of divisions will just change. This is the first step. Um, so I will not have any uh, uh, a uh, real-time uh, changeable uh, unit uh, values anymore. Now the second thing is to set those unit values then to something that is uh, is useful. So I think uh, let's go from division units from kilo kilometers to meters, um, and then change this to, for example, five meter, and let's see what happens then. Okay, so now I have something that to me is a much more useful uh, scale bar. Um, because it gives me units that, uh, that, that are easy to read um, and make sense uh, as, uh, as a unit, five meters, and then here we have these four subdivisions, number of subdivisions over here, and of course the number of divisions now set to automatic 
because that depends on how large or how small I make the area scale bar. Now and then of course you can uh, adjust the numbers and the marks and the format and the frame size and position. A lot of options to play with to completely uh, tweak this to your liking. Um, Now, and then finally about the legend, um, well, I think the first thing to say is that it's now quite small, uh, so we want to increase its size. Maybe we want to, the, to change the uh, location of the legend uh, to a place where we have a lot of white space. Um, and uh, I, I'm not really happy with this, uh, with a few things. So we have here all other values, so the thing that doesn't really... Um, Interest me because it's th this green um, category is not even visible on this map. I also do not care much for a two column uh, setup, so I would like to have a single column. And I maybe want to uh, to change the, the term uh, into an English term, so the score uh, interpretation into the English interpretation. Uh, so, yeah, I, I want to change uh, a couple of things. Uh, about this legend, so let's double click and see how we can do that. Um, so, general, we have title, we have all the items which are in our legend, we have um, the items over here, and I can uh, apply settings to the selected items, and then I have uh, layout, frame, size, and position. Okay, so and the things I want to change uh, here are in the item step. So I want to go back to a single column setup. And if I uh, I have to select the correct um, item here in the uh, in, in this list of possible items for the legend, of course, I will go back to column count to one. And I want to uh, select a different style, uh, maybe. Um, and I could just go for layer name and description. So you can see that here you have all kinds of different styles where you have different, um, let's say, a configuration of layer names, headings, labels, and how they are placed uh, alongside each other. So let's see if I select this, how this plays out for my legend. Okay, apparently I selected a, a layout now. Uh, we do not have the column name anymore, but we now have the layer name as a, a heading over here. That is not really useful, and we have no more labels. So um, I selected a style which is actually not really useful. So let's see uh, if I get this one. What it gives me is that this is supposed just color and a, a label. So indeed, so now this is legend, and I have here all other values. Now what I could do then in turn is to change the term legend, which everybody understands it's a legend, to something that I uh, want to uh, point out about the colors and the labels, and that is that they represent the interpretation. So let's go for that and click OK. And now I have uh, in the interpretation single column. The only thing I want to get rid of is this all other values uh, entry. And the easiest way to go about this is to go uh, again into the uh, properties of the legend. And then we have here the, the map extent options. What we can set here is only show classes that are visible in the current map extent. Well, that's very convenient um, because uh, this all other values actually is not uh, visible in this map extent. So if I hit that tick box and click OK, I have to do it for the right layer, of course. Then you see that the uh, the all other values entry uh, uh, disappears. Maybe uh, using correct English is also uh, a good, uh, good idea. 
Okay, and then we are left with this final problem of the uh, the labels, which are now abbreviations, uh, which uh, is not really clarifying uh, for someone uh, looking at this uh, at this map and this type of uh, classification for the first time. So let's see if we can solve this. And the most straightforward way to solve this is to actually go into the uh, uh, layer itself in the table of contents, go to the properties. And as you may remember from our classification, is that we have here the value and then the uh, colors are the unique value. But we also have here the label that we can uh, change. So if we, for example, we ch want to change this, and this is uh, Dutch, this is cow, uh, which is, um, let's say, which is ditch. So if I would now set this to ditch and I'll accept it. Now that you see that this is real time updated in my Legenda. So, um, and this again shows that um, everything that you do in this map, although you're, you're, you're working on the graphical and the aesthetical part of uh, um, making a, a useful and informative map, the elements are always directly drawing their information from your GIS, um, which is strength because it will directly update in case you change it. Okay, now finally to uh, to finish this map, I also want to uh, insert two more things. Uh, one of it is very simple. I just want to have a, uh, a title for my uh, map and I want this to uh, be Trench 31. Okay, so there it is. Now it's quite a modest title. so. But we are going to uh, to change it a bit so let's make it another symbol now we can go here for a preset um, uh, styles so let's go this one and make it a little bit bigger let's go for a bold version of that and that's rather okay and maybe uh, of course you can change here the font types and um, you can uh, again edit the symbols and uh, do a whole bunch of uh, stuff with it. You can uh, change the station of it, etc. etc. But for now, um, I'm quite happy with this, uh, this title. And now I want to add one more piece of information because uh, what's often also uh, besides the scale bar can be very useful, or in addition to the scale bar. Is to actually uh, show the the grid uh, of your data frame, so you can uh, have this set of uh, ticks on the outside of your uh, your frame that show um, uh, the coordinates, for example, of uh, of the frame. So let's see uh, how we can do this for uh, in ArcGIS. And this is then again a function of the data frame. So if we double click on the data frame, oh, let's go properties uh, what we then have here is the uh, grids of now this is uh, what in RGS is called a reference grid it's drawn on top of the data frame in layout view only so indeed this is not happening in your map uh, view but only in our layout view now what we what can we we now the use we have three options so we can go for the gradual queue which is um, a division uh, of your map by meridians and parallels what well, that is interesting if you are working on large scale but not really in our map and then we have two options a measured grid in which your uh, grid lines indicate uh, coordinates of your coordinate reference system or you can create a reference grid and that is more useful because then for example you will have sheets uh, your map device, uh, divided in sheets and then you have um, a simple reference system here so you could point out for example in a text in sheet uh, 2d you can see this or that uh, particular feature but what we want to do now is we want to create a mesh grid okay now what do we want? Do we want a grid uh, covering our whole map? I find it always quite distracting. So I, I'd rather have um, a tick marks and labels. Now you can also go for uh, 
I was only but I think uh, for our myth tick marks uh, tick marks and levels are, are fine um, next uh, default and we now define this uh, this grid and let's hit apply now if we accept this we can see we have our markers here we have a coordinate so these coordinates are already uh, neatly oriented so uh, they are not horizontally next to your map and sticking out of the page so to say and uh, we have uh, a single coordinate for every um, tick because of course on a horizontal line in a Cartesian coordinate reference system we do not have any need for repeating the same y value on the axis and vice versa so you only see on the uh, on the y axis the uh, changing x value and uh, and vice versa and um, yeah it's already uh, designed in a, in a rather pleasing way not too dominant and uh, readable and then you could of course go on and tweak this maybe we want, we want to get rid of the, uh, the markers in the drawing so let's see how we can do that yeah, so and we can do that by going into the properties of the data frame. We have our, our measured grid. We can go onto the properties and we can uh, here set all the, the properties. And then if we have lines, um, well, this was the one we uh, selected for in the beginning, of course. For, of course so this is a grid of lines. Um, we have a grid of ticks and we do not want to show any lines with ticks. So if we select that, now we only have these coordinates um, uh, indicators at the outside of our uh, data frame. So yeah, I will I will leave it with this. I'm I'm quite happy with this uh, this map. Um, and let's say I I not only want to use this map and now export it as a as an illustration, which is a functionality that I've already been demonstrating in the first video. But it would be to go to export map. Then you can set here uh, what file extension you would like, resolution, width, etc. Um, but I won't go through all that because that has been uh, already explained. But let's say um, I want to. Uh, I'm so happy with this uh, with this design, and actually I have uh, an enormous number of uh, of trial trenches to visualize. So let's say I have to make an extensive um, report in which every individual trench gets its own map um, then I would have to repeat this design over and over again now of course a way to do that is to stay within this um, this map and just uh, navigate in this way to other uh, well uh, no. skipping it on of course and this is only trench 31 so then I would have to uh, Turn on another um, layer, and I could I could actually go on and on and um, uh, make sure that so this would be better. Now um, I could just change the, uh, the spatial extent every time to cover a trial trench, but um, then we would still be changing uh, the layout of this project. And actually, what I want to do is I want to keep this project as it is. I want to save it as it is and i just want to reuse the layout as a template for other maps okay so in order to show how we can uh, create a template out of this map uh, i reset it to the original uh, and, um, and data and the simple process of creating a template in uh, rgs is as follows so we select save as as an option and then we go to the uh, folder in which the templates are actually uh, stored. Uh, and for that, we have to select our uh, username. Uh, we go to application data. We go to roaming, Esri, desktop 10.7, art map. Now, we were here already earlier when we were storing these .style files. Um, we're not seeing them because we only uh, see uh, msd files so template you can see that we have already here a, uh, a template and i want to uh, create another one 
So let's say this is the trench map template. And I click um, save. And now, effects we created a template. And we can do this by now clicking on a new file. Um, and what we have here is we can start a blank map. We can start with a template um, that is actually template based on the uh, visualization, uh, the layout that we had before, and now we have this uh, this strange map. Now it is of course useful to have a thumbnail instead of just a name, uh, so you have a little bit of extra visual reminder of uh, what it's about. Now I'll show you how you can get this uh, this thumbnail, for then you have to go into the file, app document properties, and here you can see this uh, this button over here that thumbnail. So if we do that, we click OK, and now we repeat the process. So we save as and we right location, of course, and now we hit save. We overwrite, and we would now start a new map. We can see that we have this uh, strange map template ready for us to uh, to go and work with. Now. Um, what we can also do is we can um, change the template, uh, so the layout uh, as we uh, as we are working. And I will show you how to do that. And we can do this by going to the uh, layout toolbar, and here we have um, the option change layout. So if I click on the change layout option in this toolbar, and I would, for example, select the layout that I created of our previous design. Click next. I can say um, how I want the layout to match with the items I have in my map over here. Um, so yeah, this is fine. Um, I'm, I'm just going uh, to apply this to my layers, and I click finish. Um, now nothing much happened here because uh, the we didn't really, uh, we, we had other data in the data frame, so now everything is applied to the data I have here. Um, but what we can see is that this um, legend now returns to the state that we uh, adjusted and we have scale bar, uh, which is again in the state that we adjusted. Um, so yeah, we, this is actually the, the layout uh, that we had before we started creating this new layout. And um, now we can change back I place this as the so this is the insert and then finish and now we select it for the other uh, template and now we have our map back so yeah it's clear that once you created these templates you can uh, always um, well just uh, invoke them uh, when you are working or you can start working from them and because we know where, where they are saved, they are just MQD files, which will work as a template as long as they are stored in that location on the computer. Uh, you can also send these, uh, these designs to someone else and he will, or she will have available. And you can store them in a central location for a company or, uh, or university. And you can use these, uh, these templates in this way. Okay, and so with this uh, demonstration of uh, working with templates, we've come to the end of the fourth and final video in which I have been introducing um, RGS 10.7.1. And in this final video, we've been looking at uh, styles, at uh, designing color ramps, working with style manager, uh, layer definitions, and changing and saving layer definitions, and finally with uh, map layouts in terms of, uh, of templates. So there it is. Um, I thank you for, uh, for watching and listening.